Hi, it's DeWire. It's Tuesday, July the 6th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the betting line right now. To me, it's a compelling bargain in the 154-pound unification match between Jermel Charlo and Brian Castano. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, whatever you think about the fighters, whatever success they've had, just understand that Jamel Charlo is what I call an ambush fighter. In other words, he's outside the pocket, then he jumps in the pocket. He throws two, three punches, then he jumps back out the pocket. <clears throat> he usually has better legs than his opponent. Opponents can't follow him out of the pocket because he is one of the better athletes at 154 pounds. Right, so opponents find themselves back on their heels, defending themselves. And because Charlo can lead with power shots, if you're surprised by the first punch, if Charlo lands a tough hook, then you're really in trouble. Because, of course, Charlo is going to keep the power shots coming, then he's going to back away. So, the question for me not even knowing the opponent, is how do you beat an ambush fighter? And I believe the answer is you follow him after the ambush. Charlo lost to Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison tried to follow Charlo behind a jab after the ambush. Charlo had problems with him. If you're on the Charlo part of the equation, because that was a close fight, you believe Charlo may have eked out a decision. But understand, that fight got to a decision, right? Harrison insisted on that jab, insisted on coming forward against Charlo, gave Charlo problems. Well, understand, Tony Harrison isn't the kind of aggressive, two-handed, front-foot heavy fighter, high-volume fighter that Brian Castano is. Just off styles, Castano is going to give Charlo major problems. Now, there is a possibility, and understand, Castano is unbeaten. Understand, Castano fought Arislandi Lara, and that fight was ruled a draw. Right? He had Lara backing up. He had Lara out of stamina. Right, He's going to force Charlo to work. Now, there is a possibility that Charlo jumps in, leads with a power shot. Charlo can punch. Right, Not so much early in his career, but he's a puncher now. There's a certain Archie Moore type thing going on with Charlo. Changed his style. Right? He's now a puncher trying to take you out. There is a possibility that Charlo jumps in the pocket with something hard, hits Castano, and then, as Charlo likes to do, starts to pivot, works over Charlo, ends the fight early. But if that doesn't happen, if an actual boxing match breaks out, if we don't have the early Charlo Erickson Lubin ending, then Charlo's going to have all he can handle. I believe some rounds he's going to be broken. He's going to be exposed. Understand, an ambush fighter thinks they can come in, land one or two shots, jump back out, and take a breather. You completely disrupt their stamina. You completely disrupt their timing. If when they jump back, you jump forward. Ambush fighter is not prepared, in my opinion, to fight on their back foot. They're just not. You might remember a fight I got wrong here online. Great fighter. I still maintain he's great. 
Sergio Martinez <clears throat> hurt his leg against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., right? A fight he was dominating. Uh, he took a page out of the Tyson Fury playbook, right? He's dominating Chavez Jr. Then, of course, he decides for some odd reason to trade with Chavez Jr. in round 12, right? Gets hurt, hurts his knee, is never the same fighter afterwards. So he's fighting Miguel Cotto, who, ironically, became an ambush fighter under Freddie Roach. Well, to make a long story short, when they fought, you noticed that Cotto, who had a lethal left hook, right? Cotto's a future Hall of Famer. Cotto hurts Martinez, then keeps coming forward. And you understood Martinez without one leg wasn't the same fighter, right? What I think is going to happen here is absent a Charlo stoppage, there's going to be more concern in this fight than there was the Mario Barrios <clears throat> Gervonta Davis fight, right? In that fight, the TV scorekeeper had Barrios ahead in the second half of the fight. Here you're dealing with a guy with an extensive amateur pedigree. That's who Castano is, right? Who's unbeaten as a professional, who's already beaten Erislandi Lara, who's wanted Jamel Charlo for years, who's going to come forward on his front foot and who's going to spend the entire match trying to find Charlo. Right? Charlo's going to go through a front foot heavy attack. Now, Castano isn't the puncher Charlo is. But again, styles make fights. I believe Castano is going to be more prepared for Charlo than Charlo is for Castano. So this is a fight where the odds matter. Right now, I'm just going to be blunt here. They came out with a line earlier. Castano was the underdog, a plus 179. I grabbed it. I thought you got to be kidding. They're giving Castano less than a 40% chance to beat Charlo. When Charlo has been in some spirited matches, and when Castano, an unbeaten fighter, has to me exactly the kind of fight style and the kind of foot speed, the kind of volume, to give an ambush fighter, an episodic fighter, problems, right? Let me also say, too, that I know Charlo beat Rosario, right? I believe Castano is more skilled than Rosario. Rosario is front foot heavy, wants to throw hooks, is coming in, trying to walk you down as well. But Castano is a little bit better, in my opinion, in terms of throwing jabs, flashing hand speed, throwing angles at you. Rosario likes to come in straight. Castano will come in off at the side. So he's able to slip Arislandi Lara's jab, for example. Right? You don't know where Castano is going to be. You know he's going to be coming forward. But you just don't know how he's going to do so. At times, he might be on Charlo's left side. On times, he might be on Charlo's right side. So you can imagine, I got a plus 179. Folks, I was taken because today, and I'm going to use this website just for illustration purposes, right? I'm not here urging anyone to use this website. Some of you can't because this is a Canadian site, right? On cloudbet.com right now. Believe it or not, they're giving you a plus 224. I only got a plus 179. 
they're giving you a plus 224 on Brian Castano. Let's do the math. 2.24 divided by 3.24 because they're telling you with this line that Charlo, if they fought 3.24 times, would win 2.24. They're giving Charlo just a little over a 30, excuse me, they're giving Castano just a little over a 30% chance of winning the fight. You got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me, folks. Castano already has a belt. Folks, Castano and the amateurs fought people like the Revianchenko. Castano, as I make this video, is unbeaten. That's why he's in the unification match. He has a belt, and he's unbeaten. Now, I agree. Jamel Charlo deserves to be the favorite here. Right? But in, in my opinion, anything over a plus 150 on Castano makes him the compelling value play in this match. Understand a plus 150 would only give Castano a 40% chance of winning the fight. Here are the current odds in a fight where Castano's style is one of the best styles an opponent could have against Charlo. Right here, they're only giving Castano a little bit more than a 30% chance. So the bet I'm recommending here is to take Castano at plus 224 to win the fight outright to become the undisputed champion at 154 pounds. Hedge the play with Charlo by stoppage. But I need for you to understand the risk involved and it's substantial, right? This is the risk taking part of the internet. I'm not here pretending otherwise. This fight's a huge risk. I want you to consider the fact that if this fight goes the distance and Charlo, the favorite, the more known fighter, wins by decision, fights in Charlo's country, you lose it all. Right? From this seat. I think if this fight goes the distance, the guy who they're telling you is the plus 224 underdog, I believe he wins the fight. I believe he takes Charlo's titles. Right? Don't get me wrong. I'm going to set up the hedge where if Charlo jumps in the pocket, ambush style, lands the kind of shot that he landed on Erickson Lubin, um, lands the kind of shot that he landed on Jason Rosario and ends the fight, okay, I'll say, wow, okay, well, Charlo was dominant. I'll be hedged because the hedge is Charlo by stoppage. But I'm not going to ignore a competitive fight. Folks, this fight's highly competitive, right? Highly competitive. I'm not going to ignore a competitive fight where the odds makers incredibly are giving one of the contestants just a little bit over a 30% chance of winning the fight. That's outrageous, right? I think Castano, just in the abstract, has at least a 45% chance of winning the fight. This is a competitive unification match. It's not about popularity. It's about the styles and the talent. I view Charlo as an ambush fighter. Right? Episodic. I view Castano as constant. With foot speed. With drive. To come forward on Charlo, I believe Castano has spent his entire career getting opponents onto their back foot, right? He walks down Arislandi Lara 
Don't sleep on Lara's power, right? You saw Lara stop a guy named Cornflake in the first round in his last fight. Right? Castano walks down. Lara is savvy enough to not get hit by Lara's jab with any regularity. Right? Look at his face after the fight. Here, he's in against an ambush fighter. As Charlo jumps around, because that's his game. Understand, Charlo's very reliant on a rhythm. A lot of boxers are. As Charlo jumps around, I believe Castano is going to take away from him the possibility that Charlo can jump forward. Right? Castano, the first few rounds of this fight are going to be a chess match. Both guys are going to try to figure out where the other guy is, how the other guy is moving. Right? If you can stop Charlo from jumping forward, which is what Tony Harrison did. You can dampen his volume. And you can have him fight your fight. I like the underdog here, the big underdog, the greater than 2 to 1 underdog. I like the plus 224 underdog. I only got him at plus 179. If I believed in him at plus 179, I believe in him at plus 224. I like Castano to win the fight, hedged with Charlo, by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'll concede. Charlo, if he wins this fight, he's a Hall of Famer. Right? He's been dominant at 154. Even his loss to Harrison was avenged. Right? He fought Harrison in the rematch, beat him. His loss to Harrison was razor close. He's taken on big Big fighters, right? Rosario, who had a share of the title at one time, right? And Erickson Lubin, perhaps the top prospect in the division, right? If Charlo wins this, wow, you know, he will have eclipsed his brother, who is one of the middleweight champions, right? Think about that. Jamal Charlo wouldn't be the number one fighter in his own family because of Jermel, who started his career as more of a boxer than a slugger. Right? I'll concede. Jermel Charlo deserves a lot of praise. I just don't think an ambush fighter does well against Brian Castano. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments. Thanks for stopping by.